For decades, Criterion Barrels has worked with some of the most reputable rifle manufacturers in the world in the development, testing, fine-tuning, and refining of their weapon systems. When it comes to the AR-15, it's at a place that we've never seen it before in its very long history. These rifles are capable of better accuracy and are more reliable than they ever have been. When it comes to refining these weapon systems to the point where they'll shoot a quarter inch group like this rifle will, and also run flawlessly reliable where I can take it to a carbine class and fire thousands of rounds without cleaning or lubrication, it takes quite a bit of work. And whenever I talk to people about getting their rifles to a whole new level of performance, I always recommend that they take a very close look at the eight step cycle of operation of the AR-15. And what that is, is the firing, unlocking, extracting, ejecting, cocking, feeding, chambering, and locking in no particular order. So when you break down each one of those eight steps in that eight step cycle of operation, you can refine each one of those steps to give you better performance. And to show you just how deep the waters go, let's just talk about one step in that eight step cycle of operation. And today we're gonna to be talking about lock time or lock chamber dwell time as I like to call it. And in short, very short, that's the amount of time that your bolt stays forward and locked after you pull the trigger. So let's walk down this whole process. <clears throat> when you chamber around and you fire it, the brass creates a seal in your chamber. And when that seal is created, it's propelling all the burning powders down the barrel behind the bullet. And in a direct gas impingement system like this AR-15, some of those gases are vented up the gas port down the gas tube and into the gas key on your bolt carrier group. And what that causes is unlocking, the bolt to unlock, and extraction to occur. So that's when your bolt carrier group will move all the way to the rear, and then you'd have a new round chambered into your chamber when that bolt carrier group moves forward. Some of the problems that people run into are when that process happens too quickly. So if, for instance, your gun is overgassed. Let's say, for instance, you went with a barrel manufacturer that doesn't do appropriate amount of testing on their barrels and they set the gas port dimension too wide. Or if uh, you're using uh, parts and components that aren't working in conjunction with one another, things like lightweight bolt carrier groups and lightweight buffers and you know special whiz-bang springs that promise to make your gun shoot more effectively, you can start to mess with that eight-step cycle of operation. In the lock time, or lock chamber dwell time, if you break the seal that's been created in your chamber prior to uh, chamber pressures subsiding, meaning there's still chamber pressures present in your chamber, you're going to get chamber pressures escaping out the rear of your chamber. That's problematic for accuracy because now you're not gonna have consistent chamber pressures behind your bullet, and that will absolutely affect the type of accuracy that you see from your gun. Furthermore, it's really problematic to the type of reliability you see. Uh, if you're breaking that seal and extracting a swollen piece of brass, you're putting a lot of added wear and tear on internal parts and components, things like your extractor and your lugs and your bolt and your cam pin. Also, your chamber walls will have increased wear. You'll also be wearing out your brass and you'll see you know, weird marring in your brass. So if you hand load like we do, that's kind of a major uh, consideration to take into, in, into account. Also, a lot of people misdiagnose issues with overgassing or improper parts components if they see something like their bolt failing to lock to the rear after they fire their last round. And oftentimes, it's not that the gun is undergassed, for instance, but it's just that when you're extracting a piece of swollen brass, you're absorbing all of the inertia when you're ripping a piece of swollen brass out of your chamber and it's basically causing a lot of drag and your bolt carrier group doesn't have enough behind it to lock to the rear. So if you fine tune things like the weight of your bolt carrier group and the weight of your buffer and you're using appropriate action springs and you're replacing them you know on a routine basis things like your action springs should be replaced more than most shooters do. You will help to fine tune those tiny little things and when you're talking about chamber pressures and consistency that literally does equal or help to equate to better accuracy, performance, and reliability. So this is just a little bit on just lock time. 
there are so many other aspects that go into that, things like proper headspace, uh, all the other parts and components that you use to put your gun together. Um, you know, you can break down the eight step cycle of operation, but then there's also the harmonic side of things like having a free floated barrel, making sure that your gas tube is properly free floated so you're not putting any torque or tension on your barrel. All of these things work together to give you the entire performance package that we're looking for as, as shooters. So, if you guys have any questions about any of this stuff or you're just looking to fine tune your rifle, I don't even care if it's not a Criterion barrel, give us a call because we can help you get better performance from your guns. And at the end of the day, that's really what I do and that's what we're looking to do. Uh, so you can feel free to give us a call.